this film was also very much about the relationship of art, you know, the artist to society. You know, he is very concerned with the Russian people and his his mission to the Russian people. Um, and uh, one thing that I really like about this film, so there's this whole subplot that gets introduced towards the end of the first part. It's about these two princes. There's like the grand prince and his younger brother, who's some kind of lesser nobility, I guess. And they run two different cities and they are rivals. They're enemies. And uh, essentially, you know, and um, and we see them trying to one up each other at first through, you know, hiring the best craftsmen to make their palace and things like that. And, um, you know, it's it's possible that even the, the church work that Andre is, is doing falls into that somehow, right. although it's not really made explicit because we would assume he's being hired by the bishop primarily. Um, but certainly the, the bell at the end is at the, the behest of, of uh, the, the lesser prince. And, uh, and you know, this is something I thought about a lot, you know, uh, wondered about is like the fact that we, these, these artworks that we kind of associate with like the best of Catholic art, mm -hmm. And perhaps we shouldn't associate the Renaissance with the best of Catholic art. I mean, that's that's debatable, right? But but we often do. And certainly in the mainstream, I think much more than medieval art. People right. think of Michelangelo, right. basically, the Sistine Chapel, yeah. essentially. Um, we're commissioned by these popes who were not really good popes, you know. Mm -hmm. They were not holy men, you know. And a lot of it was probably for their own glory. But, you know, of course, one of the cool things is that there was like a civilization that like made their venality sort of the invisible hand of, of Catholic civilization, <laughs> making the venality of these popes into this amazing art. Um, uh, and uh, so... Uh, you know, but, but there is the question of like, what's up with this, this, like this glory of like Catholic art and architecture coming from these venal popes and a kind of, you know, you might make you question like, well, is that what it's about? I mean, it's not, but you know, is, is that. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's brought up explicitly by one of the characters towards the end, uh, Kirill, who, um, uh, as you mentioned, Nathan is a kind of Salieri character. Uh, has a real envy of Andre Rublev for his talent, by the end of the film is basically begging him, exhorting him to paint again. Because Andre Rublev not only has taken a vow of silence, but he's also given up painting. Yeah. And um and so so you you have uh Tarkovsky gives Kirill the words, you know, that like, yeah, the prince is asking you to paint the Trinity to to consolidate his power and to glorify his reign but but it's more than that right that's what i was gonna yeah thank you that, yeah. that was that was what i was trying to get at and then i kind of got off track but yeah i like how this film shows that like you know the the intention of the artist especially as a sacred artist and like the intention of the person who's commissioning it like the the intention of the artist like functions and is valid like despite the intentions of mm. the person commissioning the work mm -hmm. um so I think I think that it, this film shows that and kind of resolves that problem right. in a beautiful way. And it also I think questions. I mean, you have to question at the who at the end of the day is finally commissioning this work. Right. Kirill says, you know, it's a sin to deny the divine spark right. within you. Right. And of all artists, if they're going to be honest have to acknowledge that the commission comes from God. Right. That the Theophany says something similar as well. Right, yeah. right. Um, Nathan, it's easy for us to just keep talking because there's I, a little bit of enjoy, a delay. Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> enjoying listening to you guys. Like, you know, um, yeah, like this, there's so much that, that could be uh, said. I think what really speaks to me, uh, um, I mean, in that, the, the, the fear of burying your talent, you know, is, is something that's yeah. on my mind a lot, always has been. But as a an artist and a, a Christian, like, and, and forever kind of, um, I will not say trying to reconcile the two because they're not opposed to each other, but often in, uh, especially in modern life, they can often seem opposed to each other. Um, the, uh, that, that Kirill's speech to Andre Rublev to, to go to, to the monastery and paint, 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 you know, never fails to move me. 
um, because yeah. it, it's such it's just hitting on that yeah there is a higher calling you know your your talent is given to you for a higher purpose it's not yours simply to bury and um, I think I would say that this is an example I guess uh, of uh, if we're considering this film in the context of trying to share this film with our communities with our parishes with you know fellow fellow Catholics um, it's very easy for the films like description to be intimidating where it's like oh man it's this three hour russian black and white historical epic oh, who's got you know who's gonna who's gonna put aside the time to do that but there are so many treasured moments within it like this this speech this moment with kirill um that that they are of the most simple um like wait you know like I, I, i'm struggling yeah. I, i'm struggling with my words because i'm not i'm trying not to reduce it to a message this is not a message film this film does not have a message to carry you know but the the wisdom the power the the truth of of what that character is trying to express is so profound and simple and and available to anybody to understand and it's all the more, and it's it's very earned. I mean, it's all the more powerful because of the journey that that character has gone on. Yeah, yeah. The journey that Carol has for most of the film been this jealous, this man eaten up by jealousy and envy, yeah, and inferiority uh, as an artist to Andre Rublev. And so, so when he is like this broken down guy at the end and just like sees things clearly mm -hmm. and says, "You have to, you can't waste your talent." Yeah, like it's like he's so it's it's such an honest moment from him, and it's all the more honest because we're not entirely convinced as viewers that there isn't still some envy in there, right. even in right. this, even in this correction. He even right. you know? he actually says um, so that you know yeah. he says there's still yeah. like one tiny part of my heart that that is happy that you're not painting or that you refuse to paint the, the Trinity. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost that it's almost as if that's how he knows that yeah. it has to be like yeah. Uh, like that, that that ironically that part of him that that joys in it tells him that it's wrong you know that like mm -hmm. no he should be painting that um there's almost like a kind of moral litmus test that happens even by way of his vanity i think we're also able to have a little bit more sympathy for kirill because actually we see vanity in pretty much all of the artists that we encounter um uh at the beginning, in one of the earlier episodes, when Theophanes the Greek sends a messenger to the monastery to get Andrei Rublev, um, Andrei accepts and says, you know, I'll, I'll come. He goes to Danila, who is his, uh, his assistant, his associate, his partner, and asks him to get ready and come with him. And there's kind of this petty dispute between the two of them, you know, and... And so we see Andre's vanity and Danila's vanity, in addition to Kirill's vanity, it's sort of like this very easy vice for the artist to fall into. And I think that we're able to be more, we're able to sympathize more with Kirill because we see it in, in the others as well. Yeah.